Hey there, it's Lena here. Welcome to my backyard garden. In this video, I'd like to show you guys my Japanese dappled willows that I've been growing in my garden for the last four years. They are going on their fifth growing season this year. I bought and planted them in the spring of 2019, and right now it is um, the second week of May 2023. I did a couple of videos on them before, but today we're gonna take a look at their growth and what they're looking like right now. Um, so this is going to be an update video of how they're doing. And then I'd also like to go on to talk about some frequently asked questions about Japanese dappled willows. I am not an expert gardener. I've been doing this for about five years, but Japanese dappled willows were one of the first trees and shrubs that I grew in this garden. And I feel like over the last couple of years, I have collected some information and I've learned so much about this plant. So um, here I am wanting to share my knowledge with everyone. Um, we're gonna take a look at these two trees first um, before we move on to the shrubs. So I have them both in a tree form and a shrub form. And these two trees, um, I bought them right around the same time. The one on the left uh, came as a twisted trunk and the one on the right came as a single trunk. And I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the one on the left has a little bit fuller and um, uh, wider growth compared to the one on the right, but they are both very attractive. Um, let's move closer to the trunks um, so you could see um, what they look like right now. Um, you can see those marks where the two trunks uh, have bonded over the years. And then on the very top part, you could clearly see that they are uh, two separate trunks. So that's the one I have on the left. And then um, the one on the right came as a single trunk. And when they first came, um, this one was really thin. Um, it grew like quite a bit thicker over the years, um, you know, in diameter. In terms of height, um, quite a few people ask me this, um, whether the, the, you know, the trunks uh, grow or not. I don't feel like they grow at all. Like they are right now at about like, three and a half maybe four and a half feet tall uh, and even if they grew uh, probably like very insignificantly like I can't visibly tell um, if they you know have grown or not they feel to me like they haven't really grown or if they, if they have like not by much and then these two right here um, are a in a shrub form and um, right now they're standing at about four feet. Um, I had to prune them uh, earlier this spring because they were growing too tall and too wide. And I have a lot of other plants growing around them. Um, and I'll show you a little bit of, uh, so these are some of the lower branches that I had to prune a lot of um, earlier this spring. And now they look at them growing back with a vengeance. <laughs> um, these guys take really well to pruning. Um, by the way and the tricolor effect or you know some people call them like flamingo willows or tricolor willows that's what they're famous for and um you know like a lot of people think they are attractive i think it's very attractive on them you see like the the tips um the pale peach or salmon or like pink pale pink colors there and then um most of the leaves are dappled in that they have like white spots of white and uh light green and and dark green like all in one um, which you know make them really attractive and when the wind blows i love i love looking at these uh shrubs when the wind blows because they just you know kind of gracefully kind of you know dance with the wind really like that Now let's talk about some of the frequently asked questions about Japanese dappled willows. These are things that you probably want to know before you start buying and planting them in your garden. So first, their size at maturity. How tall, how wide, how big do they grow? So my shrubs reach six feet tall within the first couple of seasons of growing. Let me show you a quick picture of how small they used to look when I first bought and planted them. This is how bare this corner used to look. You could barely see them from far away because, you know, they hardly put on any growth um, then. But after a few weeks, after the roots got established, they started to put on like a lot of growth from me within the same season. Um, so they were quite fast and quite vigorous growers for me from the start. And within a couple of seasons, they grew and grew and grew until last year, they started to grow taller than my fence. And my fence is a six foot tall fence. So you're looking at like six to eight feet tall uh, and wide as a shrub. Now as a tree, like these two behind me here, when I bought them, I'm pretty sure that they were grafted onto a rootstock of another tree or another species. So while the trunk didn't grow, uh, the trunk remains at three and a half 
feet tall um, the top part of the tree continue to grow and grow um, as the shrub would so together with the trunk you're looking at a small tree um, at the height of probably 12 to 15 feet tall and then um, 8 feet spread so that's their size um, growth rate uh, a lot of people want to know whether or not these guys are fast growing. In my experience, they are quite fast growing. Um, you know, for me to have like a six feet tall shrub within the first couple of seasons, I consider that quite fast. I also wanted to add that they are vigorous growers as well. Um, but I do have to say that all of my willows are placed in uh, super sunny locations, and I'm pretty sure that that uh, has a lot to do. Like that contributes to you know their vigorous growth. Um, and so sun, um, it's gonna be our next topic, um, their sun requirement. These guys love full sun. If you have a, a nice sunny spot, that's perfect for them. If you don't, um, if it's like a part shade location, it might work too as long as they get like at least like six hours of sun a day. Anything less than that, um, you might sacrifice their tricolor effect that they're so famous for and that makes them so attractive. They might not be as showy and also like the, um, the shape like it might not be as bushy and they might become like a little bit leggy um, if they don't get enough Sun um, so that's Sun and then um, let's talk about soil what kind of soil do they like I don't think these guys are picky at all when it comes to soil when I planted them I didn't get my soil tested for pH level or anything so I'm pretty sure that they'll do fine whether your soil is slightly acidic or slightly alkaline but what they prefer what they really like is for the soil to be well draining so when I planted them I made sure that I amended my soil with like compost, pine bark, uh, soil amendments, anything that would, you know, like loosen the soil particles uh, for me because my soil is kind of on the clay side. And while that's not bad, um, because, you know, clay soil, it actually absorbs moisture and it actually like, you know, um, uh, traps in moisture like longer than other types of soil but I just wanted to make sure that um, it was uh, well draining so for example my trees were planted on this side of the yard and this soil right here was a lot clayier than um, the other side where my shrubs are and um, you know I was kind of curious as to you know like were they gonna grow different and no they 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 grow like just as nice and just as healthy um because i made sure that they were well draining and um i also made sure that they weren't any like big rocks or or like big like obstacles or anything like in the in the holes so that the roots have like plenty of room to spread so those are the two things that i did uh, with my soil um then let's talk about water um these uh, plants are known to take a lot of water, right? Um, I, I'm pretty sure you heard. Uh, in my case, um, it's kind of like yes and no. Yes, only in the beginning of their life cycle. So for the first like two uh, years of growth, I gave them quite a bit of water uh, regularly. So I would come out here in the summertime and I would water like once a week when the weather was kind of hot and dry um, because I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, like they were like getting well established and that um, they were developing like really strong root system so yeah when the weather got really hot like in the high 80s or like mid 90s I would make sure that I come out here and I would um, give them plenty of water uh, I water deeply but not frequently deeply only once a week and that was key to watering uh, let's move on to uh, let's talk about their maintenance right are they like high maintenance or low maintenance um, for me on a scale of 10 if like one being low maintenance and 10 being high i place them um in the middle i say my japanese dappled willows are pretty easy to grow and maintain because i'm comparing them to my other shrubs in the garden like roses and camellias uh, things that i have to do for those guys you know like are a lot more than what I have to do for my Japanese dappled willows. With these guys, um, maintenance is only done once a year in the early spring uh, when I would have to come out and prune them um, before they put on new growth. Apart from being quite easy to grow and maintain, these guys are quite healthy as well. I have not had to deal with any pests or diseases so far at all and fingers crossed I will never have to experience it. Uh, granted, I gave these guys quite a good start. Um, I you know, gave them good soil, uh, watered well in the first couple of seasons and then um, I place them in the right location that they like which is a sunny location and that's maybe why I haven't had to deal with any pest or disease problems um, I'm so I'm not gonna go on too deep in that topic but if you've had experienced um, any disease 
uh, you know, or pets with Japanese dappled willows, feel free to share it with me in the comment section. The next question that I get asked sometimes is where did I buy my Japanese dappled willows? And the answer is from a few different places. For example, this tree I got from a local nursery which is right around the corner from where I live. And from the tag that came with the tree, I learned that it was actually grown in Oregon and then transported up to Washington to us. And the shrubs, I got them from the same place as I got this tree. And then this tree here, I got it at Lowe's Garden Center. So literally, you know, like anywhere really, like big box stores, local nurseries, or you know, anywhere where they sell plants. But the key, I think, is to go in spring, like early, mid, to like sometime in spring, because that's when you'll have the most selections and you'll get first picks as well. Um, now, uh, you know, I want to go on to talk about propagation because I feel like with these guys, you only have to buy it once um, because it's so easy to propagate. Um, I have propagated them um, from cuttings before and I've, you know, like, it, it, I was successful with it. And I think if I can do it, anyone can do it. As a matter of fact, I'm growing those cuttings on a different side of the yard that is now kind of growing into a beautiful shrub. Let me go over there and show you how my cuttings are doing right now. Alrighty, here we are. Somewhere behind that little gem magnolia tree is going to be a small Japanese dappled willow that is growing into a beautiful little shrub. Um, so this was from a cutting that I took three years ago. Um, obviously a successful case and I'm very proud. Right below it I have a uh, purple ajuga growing as ground cover and I think they look really beautiful together. I'm going to include all the links to the videos that I made on my Japanese dappled willows in the past um, in case you want to know more about them. But for today, I think that's it about me and my Japanese dappled willows. I love this plant, obviously. Cannot think of any cons other than the fact that they are not a native species to the US. Um, so, you know, in terms of the benefits that they have for our uh, native pollinators, I'm not sure if they have a whole lot, but I can say that they are also not invasive um, really easy to grow and maintain in a garden so if you find these guys beautiful and attractive I don't see a reason why not you know to have a few in your garden okay alrighty um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video happy gardening everyone bye